Hey everybody, this is Servant of COVID, and we're here today to discuss how Servant uses Wizard of Oz to highlight various themes of the show. So this is an excerpt from our deep dive into the penultimate episode of the series, Servant Season 4, Episode 9, Awake. Here we go. The movie choice was The Wizard of Oz. Dorothy's favorite. Dorothy's favorite. And I uh, love how, like, over the season, it's gotten more and more blatant <laughs> with the Wizard of Oz reference. So when I saw the actual movie playing, I just laughed and squealed. Yeah. I was like, they just did it. They did it. No, I was just wondering how much they paid to use it. I did wonder that, too. Yeah, I wondered, My like... I don't know if that's like public domain. Or, no, I guess it wouldn't yeah. be. It's a movie. I don't. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um. Here's the moment. Here Hang on. I didn't mean to kill anybody. <gasps> well, my little pretty, I can cause accidents too. I gotta go. Set. So Dorothy oh, says, gosh. "I didn't mean to kill anybody." Oh, that's what you're owing at, Aunt. And then, oh, and then oh, the, the witch exchange. says, "She." Well, Dorothy's like, "It's an accident." And then the wicked witch says, "I can cause accidents too." Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I wrote it Bingo. down. Bingo. Yeah. Right. Oh, That's God. straight out of the Leanne apologies yeah. book. So at that point, I went and was like, Wicked Witch of the West equals Leanne. <laughs> uh, yeah, looks that way. Yeah. So I felt like that was a, a pretty big, you know, symbolic uh, confirmation lot. that, yes, she did indeed cause the accidents to Dorothy, Julian, and Sean. And oh, I still oh, maintain no. that she may have been responsible for more than that. Mm. I, and we'll say, um, I Isabel, know. right? Isabel, her co anchor yes. who got shot in the head like a donut. Rest in peace. Like yeah. And um Heart Youth. Yep. Uncle George with the car. And the knife. And the well, twice. Mm. <laughs> got him twice. <laughs> Poor right. George. So um <laughs> so there have been many, many uh Wizard of Oz parallels throughout Servant. And um, so I thought maybe this would be a good time to talk about them for a few minutes. Yeah. Um, so I watched The Wizard of Oz this week oh. <laughs> because nice. I felt like it would help inform discussing it a bit more. And there were lots of things that popped up that I wouldn't have noticed had I not watched it. So I was glad that I did. I was trying to figure out like which characters equate to who. Um, and I, I think that like what I came to by the end of this too is just that like, we have elements of different things. So the story isn't going to just fit into like one thing perfectly. It's taking a little bit of this and a little bit of that and kind of putting it all together. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I feel like Toto is Jericho um, because <laughs> she's so Toto is kind of the inciting incident of the Wizard of Oz. He escapes out of Dorothy's grasp and then bites Miss Gulch, who in Oz is the Wicked Witch of the West. And Miss Gulch comes to the home of Auntie M and Uncle Henry and says, the dog bit me and I'm going to make you get rid of it if you don't give it to me. And so they end up giving Miss Gulch the, the, the dog and taking it oh. away. And Dorothy's upset. And Dorothy's like, I need Toto. I got to go save him. And so she sets out to go. She's really upset. Well, Toto escapes and comes running back to her. And then once she's got him, she's like, oh my gosh, they're going to come for you. So we need to hide. We need to run away. We need to hide. I need to protect you. I need to protect you, Toto. And that's what takes her away from the home and eventually into the twister that drops her off in Oz. And so that's why I just felt like that. And, you know, I also think it's interesting because we've talked about Jericho just not really being a character, but being more of like a device or a prop. And I just felt like that's kind of what Toto was, right? He was a yeah. device mm. to uh, get Dorothy to learn something um, yeah. in the film. So I thought that that at least in the way that they've used Jericho through Servant, that that was a pretty significant parallel. There's the three farmhands. And I got two of them. I feel like Zeke, who is the cowardly lion, is Sean. And the reason I came to that is because when we're in the car later, Sean says, I'm a coward. So ah. he has been. I was like, I was Sean. Gonna, I was <laughs> going to say he's the lion because he's all bluff and, you know, yeah. bluster. Yeah. But what he really wants is courage. Right. He, and he's, he, yeah, that's Sean. Yeah. He, he, only, he only seems to have a when he's cursing at people on tv yeah which right. i guess is yes. an act right of sort. 
just like the cowardly lion because the cowardly lion in the beginning when he's introduced is like put him put him up put him up you know he's trying to beat everybody (laughs) up and then when they're like Mm -hmm. okay he's suddenly can't deal with it that's why that's so jarring to me because that's not really him but then he gets this gordon Ramsay attitude and it's like it's really like yeah very jarring yeah Mm. And then I thought of the Tin Man as Julian. Me too. Doesn't have a heart or yep, doesn't yep. have a heart, but he's yep. really very tender. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I thought the same thing. Um, I couldn't come up with somebody for the Scarecrow, to be honest. How about Courtney with a K? <laughs> I think that did no cross brains. my mind. No brains. Yeah, no brains. Yeah. <laughs> Natalie crossed my mind too. Not necessarily because that is what she, but I have this sense that perhaps her character was supposed to be around and more important than she ended up being. Mm, I could see that. So I don't know. But and then, of course, Dorothy is Dorothy. You know, Auntie M and Uncle Henry. uh, I put them down as like Aunt May and Uncle George, but I don't really know how how much that fits or how much I agree with that. Um, It might not be a one to one. Exactly. I think that's kind of what I came to by the end of it. But, uh, you know, the Wicked Witch of the West, I knew. And then, of course, we've got the Wizard of Oz, Professor Marvel. Mm. Um, And I don't think we know who that is yet. If. If we're going to find out, you know, whether uh, is it God? Is it Frank? Is it uh, the Um, tall man? I don't know. Is it is it Uncle George? I don't know. I can't really figure out who I think, but I mean, it's got to be somebody. I'm just not sure that that I can. I don't know. So, I so. I think Frank is a good comp, but yeah, I, the I think so. Man, the hook man could be a comp too. I was really excited to see him in the trailer for the finale for next week. There's that there flash, is. and you see the silhouette of the tall man with the two yes. girls. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah. Oh no. Did you not see that watch these things. No, I tried not to, but that's fine. Um, yeah. Good Lord. What does that mean? Yeah, that's what I said. Like in the house or? Outside the house. It didn't house. look like, yeah, it looked like outside. Similar. Oh, yeah, the Usually tall man silhouette. and the twin girls. Oh, God. Okay. Any other comps with Wizard? Like you have to believe to, it's all in you all along. Right. Yeah. Um, I was, uh, when she's, the, so the you know the the movie starts primarily with over the rainbow, mm. and she's upset because Aunt M uh, Auntie M tells her to find a place where there isn't any trouble, and she says, "Toto, do you suppose there's a place where there isn't any trouble?" And I felt like the moral or the theme of the story was that the answer to that is no. Correct, so, and that yeah. that goes along with uh, what I have for revelations. Yeah. And what she realizes and learns that, you know, by the end of the film, and I think by the end of this too, like that there's no, yeah, there's, there's no one clear cut answer or one, um, you know, place where there isn't trouble or there isn't evil lurking. Mm. Um, But I was thinking too, during Over the Rainbow, one of the lines is, if happy little bluebirds fly over the rainbow. So it made me think of the birds and the importance of the birds and us continuing to see the birds. I don't know if there's something there about about that. Um, and it did make me think about like Dorothy trying to escape with Jericho at the end of season three in a, in the way, you know, just like Do- uh, Dorothy tried to escape with Toto in The Wizard of Oz. So, and then Dorothy's with, was she with Toto? I'm not sure. But anyways, she visits Mr. Marvel, who ends up being The Wizard of Oz, but she visits Mr. Mar- Marvel. And he says to her, you better close my eyes, my child, to be better in tune with the infinite. Yeah, that's so, such an odd line. I, yeah. That's so extreme. Right? But it made me think about just like all of the talk of waking up and being asleep and all of the closed eyes. Like Dorothy's always got her eyes closed and while she's sleeping. But it also made me think of seance and trying to get in touch with the universe beyond the realm. So I thought that was another mm-hmm. interesting Ah. parallel and uh, okay well we'll probably get there in a little bit but when the wicked witch the wicked witch of the west comes and goes with red smoke and fire which you know again like i think the color red has come up a lot in Shyamalan stuff and we've seen it here too yeah the fire situation you know earlier on and it looks like we might get some fire in the finale yeah um, but she also creates a poppy field and puts them to sleep and basically mm. creates this illusion of them 
in this field of poppies and then they go to sleep. That also made me think of like all the floral that we see oh Dorothy gosh. wear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the floral. I know. Yep, right now the floral <laughs> wallpaper behind the bed where they sleep. The bedspreads. And then when I was redoing the rewatch, the jacket, her rain jacket that she puts on, I want you guys to look and tell me what you think because to me, it looks like poppies on the rain jacket. It's red? Yeah, but it's still. Yeah, it's a green jacket and then has red flowers on it. Oh, you're right. Okay. Yeah, yeah okay. right? And I was like, holy mm-hmm. crap, are those poppies yeah. on that jacket? <laughs> Does that make me excited? Liz, will you tell us a little bit about um, Oz and the green glasses? Oh, yeah. So I don't want to rewatch the wizard of oz because it (laughs) creeps me out it's in willy wonka land or territory um so i just you know googled it looked around uh one thing that i found was that the emerald city isn't really emerald it's not really green the citizens are made to wear green glasses and told it's to protect their eyes from the brilliance of the city but when they take off the glasses they realize it's just gray buildings or whatever right so you know green window green (laughs) window comes and goes is it real is it not yeah Yeah. that was kind of cool so perhaps yeah perhaps the green window represents like dorothy seeing things one way but that's not really the way they are or could be an homage just to the Wizard of Oz because right. they've been yeah. throwing in these little yeah, yeah. and at the end um, yeah at the end Professor Marvel like after Dorothy w- wakes up Professor Marvel appears in the window and he's like talking to her through her window so that also I thought might have been another little nod to yeah yeah our green window um right. so the ending we get to the ending um and they've killed the Wicked Witch And they go back to the wizard and they say, you know, we've done what you've asked and we've brought you her broomstick and she's gone. And now can we please get our things, right? I want a heart. I want courage. I want a brain. I want to go back to Kansas. And so the wizard gives each of the men um, what they've asked for, but they're really more like tokens because the moral of the story is that they all had those things within them the whole time. They didn't need um, to ask him for it. It was within them. And then Dorothy wants to go back to Kansas. And so the wizard says, okay, well, the only way to get back is if we go in this balloon of mine. So I thought that was just interesting because of us seeing the balloon motif throughout the show, but particularly in the season one finale balloon where Jericho disappeared with Leanne and the balloon as she left. Yep. So that made me think of like the wizard flying away um, and the opportunity to be, you know. And so at at any rate, in The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy's about to get into the balloon. Um, I think that she like gets into the balloon with Toto and then somehow Toto jumps out and starts running. So Toto being Jericho. And so Dorothy in Wizard of Oz gets out of the balloon so she can get to Jericho. I mean, now I'm getting myself mixed up. So she can get to Toto. (laughs) And the balloon takes off. And so she doesn't get to go with it. And it leaves. And now she's stuck. And she can't Uh, get out. She can't escape Oz. And so she's distraught that she's not going to get to go home. And Glinda the Good Witch comes in in her pretty pink bubble and says, Dorothy, you've always had the power to go back to Kansas. Just had to learn it. She just had to learn it for herself. So at that point, she tells her that, you know, um, she just has to basically wish it and believe it and she can go there. And she, so she clicks her heels three times and says, there's no place like home and boom, she's back in Kansas. And the last thing that she says, or one of the last things that she says is that it wasn't a dream. It was a place and you and you and you were there. And she starts, of course, identifying everybody that was there, but it really, <clears throat> we've talked you know, extensively about what's happening here. Is it a dream? Is it purgatory? Is it real? What is it? So I thought that might also be another clue to what might be going on here. Um, So those were like all of the big key Wizard of Oz parallels that I found um, when I watched it. And 
yeah, I just was really excited to to see some of that. Um, I don't know how much it really helped me in trying to predict what happened is going to happen other than, you know, for the ending, maybe a little bit of a potential prediction. But like we said, I don't think it's going to be one thing in particular. I think it's kind of a, a grouping of things. So, mm. you know, I've read a few Wizard of Oz uh, comps or theories on Reddit none as detailed as yours <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> thanks i loved it thank you it's, well it wizard was... of oz is kind of sentimental to me too because it was the um very first play i was in was wizard of oz oh wow oh yeah. who did you play that's cool i played a munchkin Aww. nice <laughs> and um also growing up there was a, a theater that i performed at quite a bit um and one of the actors his name's uh paul hope he uh, it was a wonderful actor, and he would, when we would do shows where it was a bunch of kids during the intermissions or during time where we had downtime, he would read the ser- the Wizard of Oz series to us. Oh, cool. Aww. Yeah, and Lovely. so for years, like, we would read during that, but then once it was over, like, we still wanted to read the series, and so, like, mm. once a month or once every other month, me and a couple of the other kids that still wanted to do it, we'd go over with our parents to his apartment, and he'd make us, you know, spaghetti and and meatball sauce for dinner and us and the parents would sit there and he would read the you know we continued reading through the whole series so is it not like 13 books it That's is a really lot cool. of books yeah yeah we went through i think we went through the whole series um oh. so yeah so it's always had a special place in my heart but it was fun yeah. to revisit the movie because i hadn't watched the movie in a long time that's pretty cool so sweet you got to do that yeah but uh anyways so yeah so i loved all the the comps there and i definitely kind of have it in my mind as we as we move forward for sure 